So good afternoon, everyone. My name is Leandro Silva. I'm a production engineer with Meta. And Panos uh, is from Dublin. He couldn't travel he, despite his wishes to be here with us. But he sent his virtual presence. I'm going to play the video. And then I'll be here to ask any question, or to answer any question that you guys may have. So let's see. Good afternoon. My name is Panos Christeas. Unfortunately, uh, it was not uh, easy for me to be with you, although I strongly wanted to. So uh, I will be co-presenting with my colleague Leandro. We're, we are both from Facebook, pro uh, production engineers. I will be co-presenting the concepts of telemetry and diagnostics in uh, the frame of remote service model that I will explain. So let's start with telemetry and the very definition of the word is a good starting point because telemetry is the extraction of data of measurements of metrics across some distance or i should say a boundary uh, that is not trivial and this is what we use in a small scale when we want to assess the reliability and availability of hardware to, to say if the hardware is uh, there and working uh, for our production purposes to be able to analyze faults first of all track if the faults have occurred at all and then be able to debug them, drill them down into the root cause, do some follow-ups, uh, understand which conditions have contributed to the fault. And then as we may want to send some hardware back to RMA to be able to explain to the vendors what kind of faults have led us to that decision to send it back. Also, there is another mode of telemetry which has to do with failure prediction. So being collecting data and measurements that would indicate that something is about to fail. Uh, and a very good example of that is mechanical hard drives and smart attributes that may indicate that a um, drive is about to fail. So this was not telemetry so far. This was just measurement and monitoring as we know it. And this is a small, small scale that I call linear because things are easy there. So uh, we can collect all sensors at the same time in a synchronous manner, like at regular intervals, we can go and collect all the sensors, all the readings of the hardware and that hardware is a single device so one server one chassis and its autonomy does not depend on any other devices that have measurements and also we have full access to these measurements like we can have whatever system we want that can collect all the available measurements from that device uh, but if we try to take this thing and scale it up, then these assumptions on the left break down. For, for example, not all sensors are of the same nature, they're heterogeneous, they cannot be collected all at the same time in regular intervals, because some of them may be the kind that you collect in regular intervals, others may be uh, dependent upon events happening or being in different inter intervals that don't have the same granularity or, or don't, don't have the same na nature that allows us to. And overall, we have so many sensors and so many devices uh, that we cannot just collect them all at their full, at the lowest denominator of time interval. So that would be too much data and we need to keep efficient in terms of the storage and the bandwidth we need to do that collection. Also, because this uh, concern with a large number of units and interconnected units, we need to be able to store and mark the events across these units 
in a way, way that makes sense. So uh, we want to say, let's say that, you know, um, a power outage at a strip, a rack uh, strip has affected so many servers and the, the rack power collection is not the same thing as the individual sensors that we have on the server, for example. Another thing is that we want to be able to see the anomalies in this ocean of data that we are collecting. So we want to start with an aggregate first to be able to spot possible anomalies and then be able to drill down, revisit and find individual measurements that contributed to what uh, this anomaly may be. In terms of transferring that data now to other entities, we have the operational and legal constraints that uh, we may not want the other entities like a vendor, a manufacturer, to have a full access to our data sets in terms of, first, first of all, like the names of hosts that we have, like the host name schemes and the function of his server may be something we don't wish to share. So uh, our system needs to take care of that like anonymize or aggregate them to the level that we no longer have these concerns. And also, just because we are transferring data from the data center and out to an external a third party, we may have the legal challenge to prove that the kind of data we are transferring are just hardware measurements and nothing that would even remotely uh, be close to user data or, you know, uh, the payload we have for uh, our production. So uh, let me present you with this uh, schematic of what we consider our operational model. Let's say we have this sea of servers of devices that we want to monitor and also, you know, even uh, temperatures, uh, like environmental sensors and anything. And we start off with an assumption that the owner, the data center operation, already has some system in place, a monitoring system in place, which is very much true for everybody, uh, or wants to have their own system in place to collect the data for a start. So then, we need to make that data available to the vendors and between the original collection and sending the data out, we envision to have this API, this standard, uh, the CSM standard that we're working on, which will define the format and the operation, the functionality of the data that goes out, but we allow the operator, the owner, to have a custom or customizable block of processing and filtering that data in terms of aggregating that data, in terms of controlling who has access to what, or the anonymization I talked about. And this is up to the owner, to the data center operator to do. We only want to suggest some standards in terms of how to collect and how to store the data so that it's easy then to expose that data in its aggregate or detailed form to the vendors. Also, we want to have the same system of collection for the original data and to use that system for any custom monitoring or analysis that the owner uh, wants to do. Uh, as I said, this is the point that we are heavily working on and want to define, but we want to just do some proposals on how to also implement the parts before that in terms of uh, collection. So uh, the other area is diagnostics. So Diagnostics is more than telemetry. It's a bi-directional communication with the own machines, with the servers. And I could 
very roughly describe it as having telemetry plus action because we, before we do any action we first want to decide on our data take some input from the servers in question to be able to act upon them uh, but then we want to take some actions and times, uh, sometimes we need to uh, do a second round like a procedure uh, in its simplest form a procedure could be synchronous, like the vendor that decides on the these actions, we're always talking about across the line, the vendor can take the inputs, decide upon them, and send back the actions or the commands to be executed on the server. A simple uh, case would be, let's say, to reset a bus or fine-tune some uh, firmware but in reality, we most expect to have offline mode, which means that the, the sensor readings, the, the inputs come in, and then some machine, some automation decides on what actions need to per be performed. But that machine will be controlled and authored by the vendor, rather than you know any in-house system that attempts to fix stuff, we have the vendors now helping us uh, do that with their own logic. So we are talking about a script that the vendor can send over to the owner to do this diagnostic procedure, or the script will tell what needs to go out to the vendor as input data, as telemetry that the vendor may be interested for. In any case, the procedure may be intrusive or not intrusive in the terms of that it may affect production load on the server or not. Something like that can be done online on a server that is handling production load and user data or something that by the nature of operation would disrupt the user data or even legally not be allowed to be performed by the third party on something that has user data. Uh, we want any actions to be traceable, to be reasoned, so that this operation can be explained and analyzed, audited after it has happened. So we will be describing a standard agent that can perform these scripts. Um, a language, a workflow-like language for this script to be written at or be described at, um, a communication protocol that we need for the actions and the data to be uh, transferred at. And also, just because we allow a third party to act on the servers of an owner, we need to have some agreements on what they are allowed to do or not in what conditions. So this will have to have some sort of communication uh, on the two parties to come to this agreement. And all, we describe that as profiles that some uh, diagnostic can be performed under. And just to save on uh, and reuse our existing work, we can shape our telemetry uh, to the point that it can be used as the input or the result format of this diagnostic, this bidirectional procedure. So the data model for telemetry has some resemblance to existing formats, but also some new rules, some de design considerations. First of all, being that is mostly focused for bulk operations for bulk data transfer, not a single uh, sensor uh, reading. Because as I said, like we have a lot of data to, to transfer. Uh, we, we can express that in terms of a very simple protocol like JSON, uh, but we are not limited or strictly specifying that JSON is our transfer format. And we want that format to be extendable and as generic as possible so that we can add uh, more features along the way. So uh, we have started with the very simple concept of envelope and payload so that we can separate the envelope and strictly specify it, write a full standard for the envelope and then have a freeform payload 
that uh, each kind of measurement um, or metric can fall into. So the envelope will have a timestamp for sure, always. Uh, it will have a domain and a profile. So this describes what it applies to and under what, what conditions this data is transferred and also the location which specifies the, the, the address of the hardware that uh, this data concerns. Now, the payload is freeform. Uh, this means like it's not just raw binary, it's structured data, let's say, in the same JSON format, in the same JSON structure. We could start off with reusing Redfish, but rather than individual measurements, we put that in batches. And also the configuration values can be expressed in the same format as points in time that we have collected this configuration on, uh, at and therefore fit the same payload and envelope uh, structure of our telemetry data model. So just to summarize, the CSM group is about the complexity when we are crossing an, an owner's boundary, like the scaling up of measurements and monitoring into the telemetry world of um, cross entities. Uh, we still want to respect the existing systems. We don't want to replace the existing systems or uh, have duplicate systems in a data center, one for the internal use and one for the external use. Rather, we want to complement them. And in that sense, we want to keep the format and the requirements as simple as possible so that existing systems can be extended to communicate the existing data in the format that we are proposing. So we are almost done with defining that format. Uh, we will be announcing that in this quarter, hopefully. And in next quarter, we are doing the same uh, exercise for the diagnostics, the more complex format, so that we can come up with some draft specs and um, invite the rest of the industry to give us feedback on this format. So thank you very much. Uh, my colleague will be able to take your questions. Thank you. All right. Any questions? Hi. Um, so with different uh, manufacturers providing basically the same component, like hard drives, for example, is there going to be like a requirement that it provides exactly the same data coming out from the device, or can there be different, can the logs be different, and they can just provide IP APIs that make do the diagnostics for, for that data? Because like the smart logs, the smart data today is very limited, um, although there's, so there's a lot of room for having better sets of data coming off of devices. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I'd say it would be more intended to, instead of having everyone to adopt the single standard like for exposing the same, would be at least for the intercommunication of the owners uh, of that data center data model to actually be able to communicate with the, with the vendor in question. So at least you get that first barrier and then as we go along, like probably like we already see the industry like kind of merging some of these protocols and reporting the same values. But at first, I think that's not a goal like right now to get everyone to expose the same type of data, but more to allow us to collaborate with them, like exchange information as needed so we can, uh, at most cases, w the hyperscalers end ends up having more hardware than the vendors themselves. So like we may come across problems they didn't even see. Uh, so that would be about it. 